begin service. Let's stand and go before the Lord and ask Him to move in our midst this evening. Father, have your way tonight. Thank you for another opportunity to come into your presence, to seek your face, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn in your handle if you'd like to page 240, Victory in Jesus page. 240. I'm early.
try to attend as many services as possible. Yes. I understand everybody has a hectic schedule. Everybody's busy. And really, everybody's busy. A lot of people got this thing going on. People are working. People are, are, are raising children. People are, are, are juggling this thing and that thing. But, um, and that's fine. He's fine. Um, but one thing I have found that in all of this, uh, in all of that, it's, it's good to be busy. Remember, all business is good. Business, yes, busy, but make sure. But sometimes you can busy God right out of your life. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Sometimes you can busy God right out of your life, yes, and then by the time you realize you need to do something for God, you're out of you're, you're out of strength. You're out of you're out of time. You're, you're so wore out. <laughs> by the time you get ready to pray. You know, or whatever it is. So, but anyway, let's just find the time to make time for God. Yes, and that's yes, all I'm saying. And all that you're doing, you know, uh, meet all your obligations, everything you're supposed to do, but still make sure you find time for the most important person in the world, and that's God. Amen. 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 And uh, because I'm going to tell you what, no one had a busier schedule than Jesus. Yes, sir. But he made time to die for you. Think about every day he got up. I don't, I, when I read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, I don't read a time when Jesus wasn't there. Think about it. He was always doing something. And when he wasn't busy, he was praying. He said, I'm going to walk into a mountain alone and pray. Or, or do this and that. But he was always helping someone. He was always teaching and preaching and ministering, healing the sick. He was always busy. And no one was no one was as busy as him. But he always made time. He said, I always do those things that please my father. Yes, That's sir. what he said. Amen. So busy is good. But make sure that you're busy doing what God wants you to do in the midst of all of that. All right? Amen. And uh, so I'm thankful tonight for each and every one of you. We're excited about what God is doing here. We have uh Tuesday, home group. I want you to pray about that. Uh, we have a, 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 a new lady that's been coming out to that. We want more and more new people. There's an opportunity that uh, uh, that seemingly is getting ready to open back up for us to do another home group, which we thank God for that. Yes, we spoke with someone about that. That, that seems promising. Yes, yes. Amen. And, uh, so we just we want to you know, we want to do whatever we can do. Some things we do here at the church. Some things we need to do outside the church. Yeah. Ministries and different things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To help people and to work with people. And, and, and our young people and everything. So we, we're excited about it. And, and Wednesday night, regular service, we're praying about that. And then uh, Thursday prayer meeting. And uh, we'll be doing that. Like I said, we're going to, this Thursday, we're actually going to have a list up so we are have specific things to be praying about besides whatever it is you might want to pray about. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you can't make it to a regular service, then devil is trying to make it to prayer from 7 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, of course, Saturday, I, I understand you guys are not going to be able to practice this Saturday. You said, uh, Brother Lance, you're going to speak on that. Yeah, we haven't decided that yet. Okay. okay. All okay. right. So it's up in the air. Okay. Right, right, right. I'll make that. I'll let you know. You'll let me know, and then I can put it out. Right, right. All right. I can, I can right now, we're practicing. Got right. you. I got you, sir. Until okay. further notice. Right. All right. <laughs> I just want you to know we really appreciate the work you've been doing, and, yes, and, and right. all of the brothers and sisters. Amen. And it's added a beautiful. It added something very special to the service, and mm -hmm. we thank God. For yes, Amen. 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 Let's just praise God. Amen. God, we praise you right now.
different atmosphere. Amen. And uh, I'm just thankful for everything that God is doing. Yes, sir. And uh, so, oh, Brother Bobby came back tonight. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He told me he didn't know if he was going to make it back tonight. Just be praying. We just want to continue as a church. I feel like we have, hello, Brother Robert, I see you snuck in on me. <laughs> but we're happy to have you. Yes, yes. Yes, right there, it's fine. Amen. And I'll uh, find you something come. They got me a comfortable cushion there. Again. I'm here for part two. Yeah, part two. Yes, sir. Part two. <laughs> part two. Amen. And um, so we are thankful for God's faith. Yeah. And, uh, so, but anyway, I just want to announce and let everybody know what's going on. Don't forget to watch online Bible studies on Saturday nights. And, uh, and I noticed that uh, the viewership is going up. Amen. The viewership you. is going up in the services. Too. Yes, sir. Yes, and, sir. Uh, so I'm thankful for that. That's what it's got. Mm -hmm. It ain't because, you know, we're great. It ain't because we're mighty. Wow. It's because of God. Yes. Amen. Let's just get that straight. Amen. Amen. When you follow God and obey God and do what God, he, he makes the difference. Yes. Right? Yes. That's why I told you this morning, if we just continue to obey God, continue to follow God, the numbers will take care of themselves. Yes, Amen. Amen. The results, Amen. leave the results to God. Leave the results to God. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, Sunday is going to be special. We're going to have a special fun day for the kids. And uh, we're going to uh, have it to where they learn about the Lord. But it's going to be, they're going to have fun. Amen. And uh, hopefully, uh, Brother James, he can bring the, the, what you call them, whatever we got to do. The When I saw these down there, the thing you did, right. I was so impressed. Uh, what was some of the, uh, the, the, uh, some the saying on it? Yeah. The saying, what was some of the saying? Well, one is Jesus is at the center, you know. And because of the, the yeah, right, right. Right. You. yeah, Jesus is at the center. And one said something else. And, and, and it's, um, I think when it said children's village ministry, uh, children's village. What were you, yeah. you, you talking about the community where the, uh, the villages, the different villages? Right, right, right. Which is, hey, that's good, that's good. Amen. And, uh, but anyway, I just I, I just thought those were, I, I have no idea where you got those made. Where did you get them made? I, I, I got them in the Keys Rocks. Yeah, I had, yeah, I had I, a lot of, some especially made before. I was like, I was thinking about maybe getting some made for the church. That way you don't have to, if I say, uh, you know, brother, would you, that way you're not dragging stuff. <laughs> so we just, you know, maybe we could discuss that and talk okay. about it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and if somebody would like to, to, to give to that. Amen. I'm sure it's not that expensive. It can't be that expensive. Amen. Um, but we'll be able to uh, put it together because I things like that. And then other whatever other things we could do relative to that. Mm -hmm. So that when the kids come, we can have fun. We're gonna put the grill out on the side and just put some hamburgers and hot dogs and have potato chips and some yes. things to drink, some right. juices and waters. Yes. And I don't know if we need to you know, pop, but yeah, yeah. I get water and juice. You know, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's full of sugar too, but, That's all right. but that yeah. pop is, uh, I don't know about that pop. Pop-mart. Yeah, we don't need to be, mm -hmm. we need to be that pop alone. He will keep and still. give us some juice and water. Keep caffeine. And you think that, man, you think they're buzzing around now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, we, we just want a little bit of time to yeah. enable them, that, you know, let them have fun. There won't be no particular uh, lesson as such. We just want them to be able to come to Children's Church, have a good time, and just make sure everybody's safe and yeah. not doing nothing they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so and we'll talk more about it throughout the week and um, as we uh, go forward. But we're going to have a good time. We're going to make sure everybody knows about it. I'll print up a nice, make up some kind of nice lighter or yeah. something to get. So, so as a reminder, right. so just let everybody know it's going to be a fun day in church. Yes. On Sunday yes. for kids. Yes. And I'm not getting out there. I think the other day when I went down, I beat, I beat a couple of kids with it. <laughs> 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 I, had, I, had, I, had, I had fun. First time I played was on the job. I ain't even never heard of that game. So I came to Crystal Bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love it. I just love it. It's, it's a fun game. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and you can have a good time, but I just love those sayings. I mean, just, I, I enjoy.
the second one, it says uh, community uh, 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 children's village outreach. Okay, okay, perfect. Right. Which is which is exactly what it is. Right, right. Amen. And that can relate to church, right. apartments, everyone else. You can relate that to anything, really. Mm -hmm. But that we just want the kids to be able to come, yeah. have a good time, enjoy themselves, but still learn about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Still learn about Jesus. Amen. And then we want to make sure that all the kids in the community, if they want to come, we need to figure out a way to, to get the word out. And uh, we'll figure that out. I'll put some flyers up. My wife and I do out. We will go to each one of them villages and put up some flyers like they let us do that the last yeah. time. They let us put the flyers up. Amen. And uh, we'll promote it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we want to be able to reach the, all the kids and I put it up on social media yeah. and all that yeah. and yeah. everything. So let's, let's, do, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's yeah. get it done. But anyway, we don't want to take up all the time doing commercials. <laughs> Advertisements. Amen. But you got to promote. You got to promote things if you want people to come to it. So be much in prayer for all of our services, all of our events. Uh, we have uh, Resurrection Sunday coming up. Yes. We're looking yes. forward to that. That's going to be nice. And uh, we, we, we should, we're going to be prepared to do some special things for that. And, and I know a lot of times churches, and I want y'all to understand something. Don't take this the wrong way, okay? I get it. I am not a Grinch, okay? But I just think that we need to get away from these eggs and get away from all this junk that we, you know, rabbits and eggs. And we need to, the kids need to learn about Jesus. Amen. 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 They can have, they can, I mean, it's okay to give them candy. It's okay for them to do all this. We want to do all this. But I'm just, I feel like we're at a point in our world and in our life with, with the atmosphere that we're in, we don't have time. As such, what I mean by that, teaching things that's really not effective. Right. Or doing things with them that is really not effective. We need to be teaching them and working with them in areas that we believe are going to actually impact their life. Yes, sir. And, I, and, and really, what in the world, I mean, I, can, I remember growing up. And I remember going to church. I, was, I, I remember doing Easter egg hunts. I, I, I wasn't thinking about Jesus. Mm. <laughs> think, think about, I was not thinking about Jesus. Right? And, uh, uh, you know, and all in all, I'm just saying, we need to, as a church, we need to be doing everything that we do need to be centered around Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everything that we do. Amen. No but I promise you, they still won't have fun. We still gonna make sure that everything is good, yes. but we're gonna focus on the main thing and keep it the main thing. Amen. 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 And I promise you, when your child grow up, and when they grow up, they'll appreciate it. They'll appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Like, man, uh, you know, they won't be worried about how many chocolate bunnies they ate and all that. Oh, Amen. Now I like chocolate. I'm good. Yeah. Man, but but I need Jesus more than I need chocolate. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. One last thing before we close, or before Reverend Steele comes. Reverend Steele's preaching tonight. Sorry. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Reverend Steele's preaching tonight. What was that we saw in the store with those little bunnies, those little, somebody with peeps. peeps? Yeah, you know those little peeps? Mm -hmm. oh, peeps. My wife and I saw that. What was they doing with those peeps? They had, it was Dr. Pepper flavor. Yeah, they, yeah, they were Dr. Flavor, Dr. Pepper flavor with the peeps.
from the book of Psalms, Psalm 27. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And I want to read verse 8 again. And verse 14, we use that as a text, coupled together. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. That was verse 8. And then verse 14 of Psalm 27. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And with the help of the Lord, we're preaching on a message uh, entitled, Seeking and Waiting. Upon God, seeking and waiting upon God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your servant that's standing behind the sacred desk. We pray tonight that you will anoint him afresh. We pray, God, that you will bless your people by the hearing of the word of God. I pray, God, that your word will find a lodging place within the hearts and lives of men and women. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 This beautiful song has been a source of inspiration and consolation for many believers. And there are some scholars who believe that this uh, song is composed of two entirely different poems, if you please. Yes. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm -hmm. The other part can be taken as a fearful prayer of lament. Yes. Do not hide your face from me. Verses 1 through 6, a song of light, while verses 7 to 12 are uh, could be seen as a song of, of darkness, the song, maybe on the surface. And, but then there is a, a deeper explanation. And sometimes our lives are like that, where we're on this great spiritual high, where things are going great, seemingly everything is going smooth, and then all of a sudden there comes life challenges. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about tonight. Yeah. Things happen. And, and, and I've had it happen to me. You're doing great. You, you're feeling good. You're feeling enthusiastic. And maybe then the next day, and there's nothing really wrong with you. Maybe you think there's something wrong with you. But I'm reminded of the scripture where the apostle Peter said, knowing that these same afflictions 
are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. These things are common unto us. We go through things as Christians, Amen. as believers. Amen. 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 One might ask, how can we have the confidence of verses 1 to 6? If we are walking in the experiences of, of, of seemingly of, of darkness of verses 7 to 12. 7 through 12. And then still be able uh, to say what the psalmist uh, says in verses 13 and 14. It all depends on what we are seeking. And what it means to us. Right? Amen. What are we looking for? And I read an illustration about a teenager, a teenage boy. He was playing basketball in his front driveway, and he lost one of his contact lenses. And he went in that, and he, he began to look for it, and he became frustrated. He looked for it for quite some time, but he could not find it. So he went in the house and he told his mother, he said, I, I lost my contact lens. And he was, he was frustrated. And I, I searched for it for a while, but I couldn't seem to find it. His mother didn't say anything. She walked outside, and she, and uh, uh, in, in a pretty uh, uh, a quick time frame, she found the contact lens and came back in the house. And he said, "Wow, uh, I couldn't find it. How did you manage to find it?" She said, "We were looking for two different things. You were looking for a small piece of plastic, and I was looking for one hundred and fifty dollars." What are we looking for? What are we seeking for? People have different.
what you're looking for. Yes, sir. What are we saved from? What are we saved from? Jesus saves us from a lot of things. Mm -hmm. He saves us from sin. He saves us from ourselves. <laughs> he saves us from hell. Yeah. And the lake of fire. Yeah. It's not God's will for men and women to go out into a Christless eternity. No. Hell was even created for you and I. Right. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. Yeah. It's God's will that men and women would come to him in a reality. Yes, sir. But that's the key. You have to come. You have to seek him yeah. in a reality. It's more than just being a, a, a religious. You know, see, I thought about it. Salvation takes care of a lot of things. People have a lot of questions. And I've learned that. And I realize that, that people are at different places in their life and in their experience. But I'm really not even talking about that. I've seen people over the years, they come to the church and Solomon, and that's all good and fine, but it's greater than that. 
It's greater than that. And it's good that, you know, we, we have a desire to dwell in the house of God, this place, this physical structure. And we thank God for it. And we give glory to God. But to abide in Him. I want to dwell in Him. He, he, in, in Him. In Christ. That, that's what, that's, that should be our desire. That should be what we seek after. You know, we can go to church uh, uh, year after year and, and not really seek after God in reality. Uh, and, and, and some people, uh, maybe they do that. They come they come to church, and, I, and I'm not being, uh, 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 trying to be critical of them. I don't even need to say that. But it's almost like getting a shot. I got my shot for the week. And, and then you just go on, but you've never really surrendered to him in reality. You've held back. And affection for the Lord Himself. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And I'm reminded of you know, the story of Martha and Mary in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Where the Bible says, Mary, she chose that good part to sit at Jesus' feet. Yes. Martha was cumbered about, she was busy. And that's all good and fine. Mm -hmm. But Mary chose that good part. She wanted to behold the beauty of the Lord and to learn at his feet. And that should be our desire tonight. That should be our affection, to learn of him, to behold his glory. Jesus said, learn of me. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and then what will happen? Ye shall find rest unto your souls tonight, or your burden down in your soul. Jesus, give that burden to him. You can cast it right at him, and he'll take it gladly, and he'll do something in your life. Amen. But it depends upon what you're seeking for. What's your desire? Do you desire him tonight? We have to ask that question. I want God in my life. I live that other life. I know what it's all about. I've experienced the change. It's too, I've come too far to go back. Yeah. I've heard too much gospel. I've experienced too much of the truth, too much of God, yeah. too much of seeing God answer prayers yeah. by faith and healing. Yeah. And different things yeah. in my life. Yeah. I've come yeah. back yeah. and then turn back. Yeah. What, what did the apostle say? So we're not of them that yeah. draw back yeah. on the tradition yeah. of that life of sin and misery and degradation. Yeah. But we can inquire of him. 
James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which does what? Gives to all men liberally and abradeth not. He's not going to rebuke us for asking wisdom. He wants us to ask wisdom. Thank God for his word. Amen. The wisdom of God's word. And that's how God speaks to us a lot of times. Yes, he can speak to us in prayer. I'm not saying that. He might even speak to you in an audible voice. I can't say whether or not he speaks to me in an audible voice. I thought maybe one time when I first got saved. I don't know that. But I will tell you this. He'll speak to you through his word. Amen. Amen. To others. Yes, he will. Maybe he'll speak to you through, through the, uh, uh, the individual. Isn't he the Christian on the job? The sir. Hello. Yes, How that sir. happen? Yes, Absolutely. I, I Absolutely. Yes, How that happen? And what do you do? You keep your mouth shut? You say, thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. And you might say, thanks, Paul. <laughs> and you should know that hey, God is uh, us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's, he's hitting metal there, so to speak, at the bottom. Yeah. King, king. Use Pharaoh to help Moses. That's right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But he speaks to us through his word. Yes, sir. He communicates through his holy word. We don't go by what the ungodly say. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not but in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but he's what? There's that word again. But his delight is what? In the law of the Lord. And what does he do with that word? He meditates upon it day and night. And he talks about how he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. And whatsoever he doeth, it shall flourish. Yeah. But then we see a contrast. But he said the ungodly are not so. That's what he said. But they're like, what, the jack that the wind driving away? So who are we listening to tonight? I want to, I, I want to listen to the Lord. Amen. To the godly. Godly advice. Oh. Because I know he won't steer me wrong. Yes. He won't lead me in the wrong direction. Yes. That's what we're seeking after. I'll take God's word. God is not a man. That he should lie. Yes. To lead us in all truth. Verse 5. The privilege. In time of trouble, shelter in that great uh, that great pavilion of his special providence. Amen? Mm -hmm. And what's the Bible say? All things work together for the good to them that love God mm -hmm. and are called according to his purposes. Sometimes we don't understand. Well, why is this going on? Things happen. They happen for a reason. And not that God, not that God is necessarily trying to set something up. Sometimes he just allows things to happen. He knows it's going to happen. But it's for our good. Amen? Amen? If we're walking in the light and we're seeking him and things happen, you think God's trying to destroy you? He's not trying to destroy you. Things happen. He's molding us. And he's shaping us. It's like that potter, he has that clay on the wheel. Yeah. And he's trying to get out all those flaws yeah. in our life. Trying to make that, that masterpiece. Because yeah. the Bible says we are created in Christ Jesus under good works. We're his masterpiece. That Greek word poem, like a poem, like a poem that's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's trying to build a life. He's trying to make us what we should be. He's not trying to smash us down. God, God's not God's not up in heaven looking to destroy people, waiting for people to, to do this and do that. Sometimes we do that. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. We don't like to admit that. Right? Yes, sir. Well, they're not what they're not what, what I would want them to be. How about they should be what God wants them to be? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Otherwise, God would just make us all, all, uh, he all of us. We don't be the same. We don't look the same. Amen. <laughs> and the life that is hid in, in God, because we are in Christ, we're protected from our enemies, sheltered from our enemies. Amen. The Bible says no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because God is sheltering us. 
We're in this pavilion. And you know the scripture. I used it recently. He that dwelleth in the secret place of what? The Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, sir. Upon a rock. And we talked about that in the Bible study. Remember? Jesus talked about that foundation, those houses. One was built upon a sand. One was built upon a rock. Elements came against both. But the house that was built upon the sand, what? It collapsed. But the house that was upon the rock, Christ Jesus, that right foundation, that solid foundation, what happened? It had no effect upon it. Amen? What are we building upon tonight? Our life. Settled in God. Established in God. Established upon Him. Not, not established upon uh, philosophies or human theories or people's opinions. That's not what my life, uh, that's not what I want my life to be established upon. I want it to be established upon Christ. He is that rock. He is that solid foundation. Upon his word. Assurance, verses 8 through 10. Not necessarily seeking the face of God. This come up. It, it came up this morning. I, well, I mentioned it in the exhortation and doing this message. He talked about seeking the face of God. Now Moses wanted to see the face of God. I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Not to be redundant, but I, I mentioned this morning. That's why I'm saying for those that didn't hear the, the, the message this morning, I wasn't preaching, but I was exhorting. He wanted to see God's face. And, and, and the Lord told him, no man should see my face and live. But I'll show you, uh, I can show you uh, my human parts. I'll put you in the, in, in the cleft of a rock. That's not what we're talking about. Now someday, if we remain faithful, we will see the face of God. We may get to heaven, but seeking God, seeking the things of God, seeking His Spirit, seeking His wisdom, seeking His presence, all those things, that's how I look at that. Seeking Him, if you want Him tonight, it depends upon your desire. What are we seeking after? And as we share, it's not the diet, it's the appetite. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen? We have to set our affections on things that are above what the Bible says. And I mentioned his word, his desire for our life. What did Paul say in Colossians? If you be risen with Christ, seek then those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. Those things of God. You can't serve God and serve the world at the same time. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now we have to live life, we're in this life, and we have to work a job and pay for and all these different things. And, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about being so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good, but having a mind for God. Our desire should be Him, not, not the things of the world. And I'm persuaded to believe that if we do seek Him in a reality, and we know Him in a reality, that will be our desire. But we have to keep in Him, Amen. keep abiding in Him, and He will abide in us. His fellowship. And we were talking about that in the whole Bible study. We can continue with that by the grace of God on this Tuesday. Fellowship be with him. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, cleanseth us from all sin. What's the key? Walking in the light. Seeking him. Abiding in that light. Following him. Our desire. Amen? And then we could say, as the Apostle said, in Hebrews chapter 13, the Lord is my helper. And let's turn to that over in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. If we seek God, and we're in him, 
then we can say that. We can declare that. How many believe that tonight? The Lord is my helper. God's not going to leave us in the same. He said, Jesus said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to cast us aside. Yes, sir. He'll go with us always. And then, prayer, verses 11 and 12. Teach me thy ways. I want God to teach me his ways. Do you want God to teach you his ways? Yes, sir. His ways are above all ways. And he knows what's best for us. Amen? Amen. We don't always know what's best for us. I would say most of the time we probably don't. But God does. His guidance. Lead, lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. We walk by faith, not by sight. And we said that. If we follow him, we won't walk in darkness because we're seeking him. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen? Amen. What word? The gospel word? No. The word of God. We need God's word. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and we need to read. That's how, that's how that, that's, this, is, this is part of the armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. When the enemy tries to put things, he tries to infiltrate and throw those fiery darts. We have, you know, we have the different pieces of armor. I'm not talking about the armor of God, but it's still significant. The shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. That's what Jesus used when he was tempted in the devil, in the wilderness. It is written. It is written every time. He didn't say, oh, I think this, I think. It is written. He resorted to the word of God. And that's what we need to do. Deliverance from the will of my enemies. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Amen? The Bible tells us that. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Verse 13, where he said, There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common unto man. And he goes on to say, But God is faithful. He'll make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. And, you know, I thought about this and I even wrote it down. A lot of times, we put ourselves in bad situations. In fact, it all goes back to that what are you seeking tonight? Where are we walking? Didn't my pastor say that? He said some people you got to watch your feet to see which way they're going. I've heard him say that before. <laughs> but a lot of times we put ourselves in bad situations. And we can't avoid that. And I'm not, now, I'm not saying that if, you know, things aren't ever going to happen. And that's not a justification. But just take that in a general way. A lot of times we put ourselves in, in bad situations. The Bible says it rains on the just. And how do you unjust? Things happen. But God is a deliverer. David had his domain. Paul had his Alexander the Congressman. We all have our things we have to deal with and contend with. What did Paul say? He said, I, he said that uh, I, I besought the Lord thrice that the, his, that the angel of uh, Satan buffeted him. And some people believe that was all the persecutions he had from city to city as he was preaching the gospel. But what did the Lord say to him? My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God knows. Encouragement. Verses 13 and 14. To believe. I have fainted unless I believe. And we're almost done here. Second Corinthians. Chapter 4, verses 8. Verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. We might go through things. But we're not, we're not destroyed if we're in God. Right? We don't have to worry about that. Why? Because we're in good hands. Our soul, our spirit is in good hands. In Jesus. 
The enemy can only do so much to us. I'm reminded of Job. He can only do so much. But Job passed the test. He said, the worm shall eat my body. I know that in my flesh I shall see God. Amen. And he came through. He was blessed even greater than at the beginning. Before he went through all that, uh, all that mess that he went through. What happened when he, when he was walking on the water? He took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sing. We have to keep our eyes on our hands. I'm not a good saint, but I'm not being critical. I'm a pretty good swimmer, but I'm not a big fan of the ocean. I don't want to be eating the lodge or drowning. If I can't see what's in the water, I'll see you later. And, and I, and I, I was swimming since I was a little boy, but. I think Jaws did it too. Yeah. I don't know about it. But the point is, Peter, he walked on the water because he had his eyes on Jesus. He took his eyes off Jesus and began to sing. And that's what happened to us. Right? We seek him, we're looking under him, but we take our eyes off of him, we begin to sing spiritually. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. To wait on the Lord. The expectation of faith. Is from him. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 5. We're almost done here. Where he said here, Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be greatly moved. How, how long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be, be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. See, see, my, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. David knew. He knew where his expectation was from. He knew that God was going to see him through. And that word wait, to wait, attending upon him. And it comes from the word call. And, and I thought it was pretty interesting when you look it up. It says uh, it, to wait and to attend upon, but also uh, possibly, uh, well, to bind together, possibly. By twisting like a cord. And that's pretty interesting. If we're bound up in Him, we seek Him, and we're in Him, abiding in Him, I think we're in good shape. Yes, sir. Right? Amen. Because we know where our expectation is coming from. He shall strengthen thine heart. Be of good courage. Be still and know that I am God. And Isaiah, and, and I love this here, and I know he's talking about a different time frame, but it's still good. He said here in Isaiah, Chapter 25 and verse 9. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And a different time period that's going to come after the church. I understand that. But I thought about that. Thinking of that. The, him saying that. The prophecy. This is our God. And I thought about times where God, we've waited upon him. And he came through. And, and, and he exceeded our expectations. And almost like the prophet standing there with his arms crossed saying, look at God go. This is our God. Look what he has done. Look what he has done for us. Can you say that? I can say that. I've seen God come through Amen. before in my life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No strength in thy heart, be of good courage, be still and know that I am God. And when we know and we have confidence in him, in verses 1 through 6, and we've experienced verses 7 through 12, we can then say what he says in verses 13 and 14. And I'm closing. G. Campbell Morgan, who was an evangelist, I believe he was from England, said, Waiting for God is not laziness. Wait, waiting for God is not going to sleep. Waiting for God is not the 
uh, 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 abandonment of effort. Waiting for God means first, activity under command. Second, readiness for any new command that may come. And third, the ability to do nothing until the command is given. Yes. Tonight, mm -hmm. we need to seek God and then we need to wait upon Him. Yes. Yes. And then, and then, we will receive from Him. God bless you tonight. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you have.